Welcome to the show, Make It Plain, the Eric, Key, and Cameron show. On today's show, we'll discuss our good brother, Eric Owens' new book, Getting to Know God. This will be a great conversation. This podcast is dedicated to addressing various topics from a biblical perspective, coupled with practical solutions for daily application. In essence, we want to take the Bible, which is relevant for all that we need in this life, and the one to come, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. And we just simply want to make it plain. If you'd like to reach out to us and submit questions or comments regarding the show, uh, we love to address those as we always um, extend the invitation to our viewing audience. We love you guys. We certainly appreciate all of the correspondence y'all give to us. Um, we really do appreciate it and we don't take it for granted. But uh, for those of you who don't know how to get in contact with us, um, you can reach out to us by email. Make it plain, hab22 at gmail.com. And we often use um, your questions and comments to drive our show content. We just feel like we shouldn't reinvent the wheel, but just simply uh, you know, give the people what they want. Um, so Ooh. in today's episode, we have our good brother, um, Eric Owens, with us. And Eric is, for, for, and if you don't know who Eric Owens is, like, I don't. <laughs> I just don't even know what to say at this point. The man. Yeah. The, the myth. The, the legend. Yeah, you know, so, 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 so Eric, um, Eric is, has a very special place in all three of our hearts. And, and right. Eric is, um, Eric is a, like a big brother to us. I tell you, especially as far as our ministries are concerned, man, we, we, he is near and dear to us. Amen. He holds a special place in our hearts. Um, I probably met, I don't, Eric, I don't know how long it had been since we met. I, I think we may have met at PTP. And then, I, and then I know while I was preaching at Avondale Church of Christ in Chattanooga, Eric was preaching at Avondale in Decatur. I, I've told this story because you can't make this up. So I was <laughs> preaching at Avondale in Chattanooga. He was preaching. No, you got to set it up like the way you told me. Eric Garner was preaching. Well, listen. <laughs> at Avondale. You, you, know, you know how you had James the Less? So Eric the Less <laughs> was, was, preaching, <laughs> was preaching in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And Eric the Moore oh, was boy, preaching right. in Decatur, Avondale and Decatur, oh, Georgia. Boy. And so we had gospel meetings at the same time at the locations. And both of the speakers' names were Melvin. I think we had Melvin Sapp. And they had Melvin Ote. And so you can't make this up. At Avondale Church of Christ, where the preacher's name was Eric, the guest speaker was named Melvin, and they were happening at the same time. Wow. And, and I, I would get emails for Eric at, at Avondale and Chattanooga <laughs> all the time. You probably didn't get any for me in Decatur. But, um, I but, got comments. I got you comments. got comments. Yeah. Well, good. Now, you know, I have gotten... I have. I have seen you. You have my like, yeah. No, that's not me. That's <laughs> no. Nah, I've got that. That's, that's the other. Uh, I have got that. Oh, so, yeah. that's a so, great sermon you preached. I said, "Oh, that was Garner. Yeah, Eric Garner. <laughs> yeah. Eric Garner." So, so uh, but he he, had, you've done a gospel meeting for us um, at Avondale, the new work where I am at Udawa. You've done a meeting for yes, us sir. there. Um, we've been we've I've had the privilege of speaking with you at, on various lectureships and um, just 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 so near and dear to me the conversations we've had and. And um, the advice you've given me over the years I as tried. a gospel preacher and various decisions that I've had to make in life, um, I've I've called you That's and right. um, and so you you've just been a just been a great a great encouragement and example for us. What, what, what about you guys? What about Cam Key? Um, for those who don't know, um, I work with Eric's brother Greg uh, for two and a half years. It's a long, rich history there, but I know something nobody knows. Uh -oh. The man, the myth, the legend. I'm, I listen. I'm, I want this. I want this. He has a nickname. Uh oh. Wait. Wait, wait a minute. Wait. 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 We're 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 going to do a book review, is it? Yeah. We, uh, okay. Here we go. You know we're recording. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but this is this is all fun and joke, man. I, Eric was preaching one time, man, and he was making his point, man. It was it was a great point. Romans twelve, one and two. You know. Right. Of course. And Eric said, uh, man, when they start." Calling you Eoski Love. <laughs> Eoski Love. <laughs> it, it, it took me a minute to realize. I said, E, Eric, Oski. <laughs> <laughs> 
Eoski. Eoski. So, so we, we have in the studio with us today. Eoski. Eoski oh, from like Rockford, it. Illinois. I love it. Man, man, the preacher, man. author, <laughs> <laughs> great man of God. Uh, uh, oh, man. <laughs> oh, boy. Man, but no, but other than that, man, he he's just been a great friend, a great resource. Just, man, he means so much to me. Uh, like you said, with you, great advice, practical. Uh, man, love the dude, man. Right. Love it. Love him. Yeah, can't do nothing but echo those same sentiments. When I, I obeyed the gospel in 2010, I remember coming to my first, well, actually my second lectureship, and I met I met Eric because I was working at the East Memphis congregation with Robert Williams. Mm. And Eric took me in like he like literally treated me like he knew me from day one. Never like it was like, man, these dudes are just genuine because in my eyes, I'm seeing giants. I'm, you know, I'm still, I'm fresh in the gospel, I'm at preaching school. And hey, you want to go out to lunch? And I'm like, this dude wanna, he wanna go, like, they wanna take me. I don't, right. you know, I don't even know these guys right. like this. But it was always the genuineness, the respect of just being there. And man, I just I really appreciated that. And it just always stuck with me. You know, one of the things Eric said to me, my first year, second year PTP, when he seen my wife was pregnant and he said, Brother Ford, let me talk to you. He said, <laughs> you know, to be fruitful and multiply, that one's just for you. <laughs> Keith took it literally. Yeah, that's, you know, it, it was, it, it was that, that, always stuck, 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 that always stuck out with me, stuck out with me. And then just the genuineness of being able to reach out, brother, I got a question or wanted to know something right. or just, so I, I I really appreciate that, and that's that's something that is needed, brethren who invest in other brethren to encourage us. Yeah, right. So yeah. I, I I love the genuineness. Family is great. Family know his brother, his wife, yeah, um, nephews, all down the just line. Great so. stock, man. I hey, tell man. you, hey, just man. just hey, as you said, Barnabas. I mean, if if there ever was one in my life, it's been Eric. And we can't we can't forget his wife, man. So oh yeah. oh yeah, of course. Sister listen, Vanessa. we were we were gonna talk about sister, yeah, sister man. <laughs> she is. Uh, <laughs> I tell you, that is that is a sister right there. That is a sister. You know, when when God said be fruitful and multiply, He said challenge accepted. I just <laughs> I just wanted to just want to throw that in there. Yes, <laughs> that definitely accepted the challenge. It's, 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 oh, like, it's like it's like whatever whatever you hear a guy says, we are pregnant. <laughs> Ten times. No, I'm just kidding. Eight times. I hope not ten. Listen, uh, listen we, really? we don't know, Key, so we just well, go. We, the, uh, funny thing, before we move on, you know, my wife looked at me one day, she looked at the baby and said, you want to go for ten? I said, I want to try for eight. <laughs> <laughs> she said, let's go for it. Let's go for it. We, we, we right there. Well, listen, man, uh, we, we have spent we have spent some time and, and, and preferably we, we'll be able to to cover several, um, several things with, with Eric, we've got him for, we've got him for a few episodes. So I'm, yeah. I am, I am ecstatic about that. This Absolutely. is going to be amazing. Um, so Eric, I, what we want to do at this time, man, just kind of turn over to you. Just, just kind of tell us, man, tell our viewer audience, um, just about you, just in case there is someone out there that, that perchance doesn't know you just tell us about yourself, man. You got the floor. Yes, sir. I'd be glad to do that. But before I do that, if you don't mind, let me just say thanks for having me, uh, man. We're, we're so proud of you guys man, and, we've been looking and the show this, and uh, all that y'all are doing, man. Everybody I know who knows y'all, the, the podcast is, is just off the charts and uh, we love and appreciate y'all. Just absolutely mm -hmm. mad respect for what you do. And so I'm just, man, I'm humbled to be here and appreciative. And uh, thank y'all. Thank y'all for having me. Yes, thank sir. you, bro. Thank Love you, you man. Here, man. Love you. Uh, Eric Owens is, uh, is my name. My wife's name is Vanessa. We uh, met in seventh grade. That's when we met. And so we have been, we weren't instantly uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, but we were instantly friends. Uh, and the friendship happened because um, we tell two different stories here. We got two different variations. Of course. So it depends on who yeah, you no, talk to. Of course. One version is uh, a little mannish boy touched uh, a young lady inappropriately and she punched him in the stomach. Uh, and <laughs> that punch became uh, uh, the course of friendship right there. That, that's how it all began. That's one version. I ain't gonna bother with the other version, so we just go with that one. Uh, but Vanessa is absolutely fantastic. We have uh, went to high school together and that's when we started dating. We have three beautiful daughters, uh, Brittany, Brianna, and Bethany. Brittany is married to uh, Will, and uh, they have two sons. That, therefore, we have two grandsons. And as great as children are, 
I think somebody put the word grand in front of children because it can get better. Uh, Ooh, it, yeah. it goes up from there. And Amen. so Landon and Logan are just, they are the love of all of our lives. We are so, so happy with them and proud of them and just ecstatic to have grandchildren. I preached at Avondale for 25 years. Uh, did not think I would leave. Never really saw that coming. But uh, as life goes and things change and uh, we moved last year, almost to this, almost to the year now, to uh, Round Rock, Texas, and began work with the West Side Congregation. And they have been absolutely fantastic to us. They've welcomed us, received us. The work is going great. Elders are fantastic. Members are great. Deacons are great. It's just a, a thrill to be there, like a, a renewed lease on life. And uh, we're just very excited about the work. Great. So, Thanks, brother. We appreciate you. And <clears throat> the, the work and your work speaks for itself. And I know that you know, I would, I would ride at times, you know, headed to, you know, speaking gospel meetings or lectureships. And you know how it is, man. You, you know, technology is what it is. You can pull things up on your phone and various websites. And so I would always listen to lessons from brethren as I'm riding and listening to sermons and everything like that. And I tell you, man, when I, when I tell you top of the list, I tell you, Owens is the top of the list. I'm listening to sermons and I, I quote Owens in my sermons. And so um, you, you have, you have been a, a soldier for the cause of the, uh, uh, of the Christ and his glorious church. And so right. we, we appreciate the, appreciate you for that brother. Man, we've quoted you several times on the show. Yeah, uh, the show. yeah. yeah we sure have. Uh, 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 we, we probably make a book of Owenisms, uh, uh, <laughs> that we, that we've come up with. Yeah. And I, I'll just say, I add to what Eric said, what Garner, yeah. um, man, I still remember some of the, like the most powerful sermons. Man, you got a you had a sermon you preached years and years ago. Uh, it was something to the effect of uh, how people say God is good all the time, mm. all the time God is good, and it's it's been about you know you got them four or five sermons that you just immediately remember, and it was a Sunday night and I remember listening to it. Somebody had texted me and you was at Avondale in Decatur, and I listened to it. I had goosebumps from all. Mm. And it was about how people view God and his goodness. And, and, and it was like you were just going through the Old Testament showing all of the bad things. Uh, but based on what people say, you would still have to say God is good. And I just remember hearing that. I was like, man, that is that's a masterpiece. Man, listen, one, the one that did it for me was South Haven Lecture on death. I think it may have been 28. It's, it's been it's, I say recent within the, five, the last five, mm -hmm. six years. That one and do I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. I was like, boy, Eric is fired up. Yes. And then PTP 2014, when Eric stood up and said, I'm black. I didn't choose, <laughs> you know, I didn't choose this. And when you said, if you fail to give your kids God, you have failed your kids. And you and he started, it was just silence and whole like the whole PTP was quiet yeah. at that moment. It's crazy. I have you what for me? The sir, uh, the gospel meeting that he had done, you had done for us at Avondale in Chattanooga. The saddest scene ever seen, man. Matthew seven, mm -hmm. twenty one through twenty three. With Timmy, he's having a conversation with Jesus. You talk about goosebumps, man. man. That was that was that sermon right there, man. I tell you, I was I was on the edge of my seat, and I was just I was hanging on every word. When he finished, I was like, uh-uh, it can't be over. I'm like, this cannot be over. <laughs> like, he's got to have some more, man. It's, I mean, I'm telling you guys, like, if you ever want to, um, more information about Eric, obviously contact us. We'll, we will get you, like, we'll get you several of his sermons and but places where you can view right. um, his sermons and things of that nature. So let's, let's jump in for this episode and try to dig a little bit deeper. We, I know we spent some time getting to know, um, getting to know Eric, but he wrote a book titled Getting to Know God. And um, so we're going to talk about that book. And and first of all, do you have, you've got some other books that you've authored. Yeah, I have a, a total of, uh, I think, eight. And uh, I have several of them here. The one that Key just referenced is The Day Death Died. And uh, Robert Williams was in the audience that night. And when I, I finished and got to the back door, he said, man, you need to write that. You, you need to put that in writing you, you, so people can read that. So that's that's actually what this is. 
it's that sermon in I never, uh, I never knew that in uh, in a in just a little short pamphlet, but it's uh, that was one. Uh, this was actually my first one. Uh, so you want to be happy, and uh, that one originated for a lot of the same reasons. People talking about God, prosperity preachers was talking about you know the the, the your best life now and all the ways that God is going to bless you and give you and and so. I didn't know the title. My my family actually came up with that. They helped and me I, with that one. I remember you and I talking about that. Yeah, you, you was you was starting to write it, and you was like you was like I think I'm gonna do it, Cam. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it to writing. That was the very first book, and I don't know if you guys have started writing yet, but I'd encourage you to because I know you have a lot to contribute and say, and um, your sermons alone would be useful. We were at a, a lectureship out at Focal Point, and an older brother. He had to be. 70, 80 years old, but he had the room and he was talking to preachers and he said, man, you need to write because writing will outlive you and it will go places you can't go. He talked about a, a, a track that he wrote. He said it was in a foreign country somewhere. He said, I've never been there, but this material has. Mm. And, he, and that was the impetus to kind of encourage mm. me to start writing. And, and that ended up being the first book. That's a great perspective. I've never Never thought about that. Yeah. And it's funny when you think about that too, because I think one year at PTP, I don't know if it was Alan Webster or somebody talked about, you know, years time, how much sermon outlines, Bible study material, you end up almost writing about what, eight and a half, nine books worth of material, just yeah. from mm -hmm. biblical material, just from your weekly preparation. So. That's interesting. Interesting. Well, listen, what we want to do, we want to jump into your, your newest book, Getting to Know God. I've, I've read the book. We've all read it. Um, it was amazing. It's a, it's, a, um, it's, a, it's a personal narrative. And, um, and it reads like that, which is I love. Like I love because you, because you open up yourself yeah. to, to the world. And, 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 um, and, but in a good way, man, it's, it's, it, there's this. There's this air of vulnerability that I think right. is I think that kind of that's what protrudes this show is kind of we, we're just kind of vulnerable and we wanted it to be that way. I think people resonate with that. You know, people are like, hey, or P, that resonates with people because they're like, hey, he is a person. Even though we see him speaking all the time, he is a person. He has issues. He's he's had struggles. He's had successes. He's had difficult decisions. Um, he's had, you know, marriage is not always perfect, always great. All that. So, sure. you know, it's a great book. I know when I, when I opened it, brother, I, it was hard for me to put it down. The only way I could put it down is because the plane landed. <laughs> and that's the only reason I stopped. And so I read it. I read the whole book. I read the first half on my plane ride. To, oh, we, we were in yeah, the conference together, in Texas. I, I started it because I just had a half time started it. And finished it on the ride back. I finished Man, you timed that thing perfectly. Man, were, uh, listen, I was I was devouring the book. I, I think for me, the book fits two kind of familiar sayings. You mm -hmm. know, uh, my life is an open book. Right. You yep. know, and here it is in black and white. Sure. Yeah. And so. Another. Man, reading the book, man, it just kind of I told Eric about it. I was like, man, you know, it's amazing how uh, people's lives can be kind of intersected right. and bits and pieces can mm -hmm. be so relatable. Yeah. Uh, so for me, man, just, just kind of reading, just kind of the insight of, you know, you see a person now, mm -hmm. but then you never know how they got to that point. Exactly. And yeah. so when you read the book and you read his background and everything, ah, uh, man, it was, it was just like, wow. You know, people watching is, I, I love to people watch because, because in my mind, I'm like, that person has a story. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has a story. And what's beautiful about the gospel story is that no matter what our story is, God seamlessly weaves our story into the gospel story. And it doesn't matter what your story is. Absolutely. Man. It's beautiful. The Absolutely. God of heaven is amazing. Amen. Um, he is he is unable to be known. I, I, he amazes me every time I open the Bible. But Amen. so let's jump into the book, man. Tell us about the book. Just. Just the importance of knowing God. Just give us your journey. Just yes. in a synopsis. You obviously don't. Listen, hey, Amazon, go buy the book. Like, he's not going to tell you the whole book. Like, you're going to have to go buy it, right? Absolutely. But uh, um, 
again, my family helped me with the, the title because <laughs> the, the idea of journey, you know, I was struggling with what to call it. It was originally just getting to know God, but it, it has been a journey. And I didn't plan it right it this way. <clears throat> part of being, part of going through your struggle and I know as a counselor and as a professional in that field, you know, people figure out a way to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. They figure out a way to insulate. They figure out a way to, to navigate struggles and challenge. And so one of the things that happened to me was that it, it ended up closing me off pretty much, just kind of hiding behind layers. You don't want to project something you're not. You just want to protect yourself. Right. And so you just go in and in and in. And as a result, people know you, but, you know, you have doors that they they just don't get to. Right. And, you know, with you guys, it's different. You, you get certain friends and, and they get closer and closer and closer to the core. And so I didn't exactly intend to write it that way. It just kind of started. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first thought was, when did I meet God? When was God introduced to me? And that's what started me back so early in my life. It was like, mom introduced God to us and we'd never known anything else. Right. And so we started so young. And then as I started walking out of that, it's like, wow. And then this happened and then this happened and then. And so God became, you know, pretty overarching and, and almost mm. oppressive in my mind, trying to please wow. him. And that's how the narrative kind of got started. And I was, it ended up being real therapeutic for me because I actually felt like I, I don't know, vomited it all out. It, it, right. It's all out now. So when they see me now, they'll know. I mean, there was a little dude that was bullied. There, there was a little guy that... Uh, was was pushed around and didn't, you know, didn't have all the answers and trying to fit in and figure it out while at the same time trying to serve God, who is absolute and objective and right all the time. And so uh, that's kind of how the, the narrative got started and just walked on all the way through. Boy, I knew it. I was like, through my life. I was wow. like, man, this, this whole journey and trying to know God. And I, and I tell you, there were some parts of the book that just I mean, I was I was sitting there, you know, just like, oh, man, I can't wait to see what's next. And I'm reading, I'm reading, especially times, you know, like, you know, I, I heard and I knew this before I'd ever read the book. Eric's Eric's a hooper. like He can hoop. And um, uh, Michael George and the goat, by the way. But anyway. Um, and he knows that. He yeah, knows that. Yeah. 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 I, I listen. Yeah, we know that. Listen, we we yeah. know that. Yeah. That's a constant on this show, by the way, just in case we, it we, 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 case we, we slip it in every, <laughs> every now and then there's the subliminal aspect to it yeah. you know, to be in the back of the, you know, but anyway, so, 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 you know, this idea that you, you used to hoop and you went to college, you know, yeah. um, and, and play a little bit of ball in college, man. I did play for a couple of years and then went to the Marine Corps and played right. in the Marine Corps. Uh, and, and we got to the highest level that we could get to in the Marine Corps, and that is a, a all Marine team. So they start you with uh, your 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 company. I was in tanks, mm -hmm. and so your company plays other companies in your battalion. There's four bata four companies in a battalion, and you play the others. So tanks plays armory and and infantry and stuff like that. And then they take all of those elements and they make a team for the whole base. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then they take that base team and they play other bases teams. And then they take all the base teams, bring them to a tournament, and they play all of the teams. And then they divide a team or comprise a team from all of those base teams, East and West, in the Marines. Then they take that team and they play the <laughs> Army and the Navy and the Air Force's version of that in an all inter-service uh, the whole NBA yeah. in, 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 in the, the military. military. Right. I never knew that. And be all you can be. But all you can be. <laughs> yes. And so that that was that that was that was interesting. And of course, I, I knew I I known you. You know, but you know, you but to that ball. end though, in the book, it's a natural progression, right? You know, from childhood, teenage years, high school, college, marine, exactly. Just, and 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 that's what I really liked about the right. book with the flow and the progression. And it's like, man, you just kind of basically seen them from a child up into what you see now. And how and how you became a Marine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know before, before you before you that was, that was funny. I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> thank God, thank God for mothers. Right. <laughs> before before you go go to there, when I when I read it, I thought, man, this is so therapeutic to see you don't have many people who will put their self out there like that. Right. Somebody said, oh, Eric wrote a book about himself. No, like this is not a glory of Eric. 
this is glory right. to God. It really yeah. is this, not. That's what I, I want to make sure we press that this is to God all the glory, all the scriptures Amen. that you'll see in here to show how God continues to show his providential care for us, how he provides for us. And that's and me reading it like, man, because I'm looking at it from, I'm, I don't know why my, my counselor brain kicks in. Right. And I look at it like, man, if all of us will be that vulnerable with ourselves and put ourselves out there, that's why James tells us that we confess our faults one to another. Mm -hmm. so if, we, if we had a community where we could really do that, mm -hmm. you know, we can get those things off our chest mm -hmm. and help us in our Christianity. And, and just seeing you put it out like this, not fearful of what the repercussion will be or somebody will say, oh, look at Eric. He was this or that. Yeah. That that was really big for me. And I'm just going through it like, man, I, I aspire to want to be able to put myself out there in a position, which I'm, I'm very open already. Anybody knows me. But I, I, I definitely want to say when you read this, this is not a glory to Eric. This is a testament to what God has done. It's and it's true. true. But, but, but to, to that same point, though, but in that, like the story of the Bible? Yes. Like when you think and about Moses, well, I, well, Paul, David, David, Solomon, yeah. their and lives are on, this, are, are on display. This, this maturation right. through this relationship with this infinite being that you are attempting to reconcile in your own mind right. being so far. You, you know what resonated with me? And this, and this, and this, this idea permeates like the very first chapter to the last one in the book. When you would say, you said, um, you preach the God you knew mm -hmm. and, and the people, people yeah. learn the God you preach. That's right. And um, or or variation of that. Mm -hmm. And um, and man, and so I didn't, you know, I didn't have that version of God that you had earlier on. But the reason I resonated with the reason it resonated so much with me is because I remember the time I remember when the light switched mm -hmm. in my life to where I stopped. You know, I remember the God I had been taught when I become a Christian and come to the church. And then all of the studying that I was doing as a new preacher and, and I'm teaching, right. you know, people, this God. And, yeah. and I was finding myself spiritually dehydrated, you know, because I'm giving everything to everybody based on what I learned God to be. And I just started reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. I just started mm -hmm. reading. I said, you know, I've studied the Bible. Yeah. But I don't yeah. think I've ever really read the Bible. So when I read the Bible, I was like, man, you know, this is, it, it, it was, it, it was a change, you know, it was changing. Uh, you, you know, the thing about that is, Honest men will recognize that. Yeah. But by that same token, you can have somebody take advantage of that. Sure. Knowing that they're misleading people, knowing that mm -hmm. they're yeah. teaching a view, a doctrine from the word of God or about God and is leading people down, yeah. destruct, down the road of destruction and they don't change. Well, listen, we're, we're going to continue this conversation. Um, that's our plan. Right now we have to conclude. Um, if you'd like to reach out to us and submit questions or comments regarding the show, again, we'd love to address those. Uh, even your questions and comments we might use to drive show content, make it plain, hab22 at gmail.com. Our good brother's going to stay with us for a little while longer. We will see you guys back in the next episode. Please tune in as we continue this discussion. May God bless you and keep you as you seek to conform your will to his. <laughs>